This is the K95.3 Sports Show Podcast, brought to you by the Fan Zone in Wilmer's Candy Mall. Welcome to the K95.3 Sports Show Podcast. My name is Bo Stanfis. As usual, if you like what you hear, hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button if you want to check the show out uh, every week on Wednesday mornings. And if you have a bell, if there's the, you hit the bell button next to it, uh, you'll get push notifications on your cell phone when new episodes drop every Wednesday. Thank you to the Fan Zone for sponsoring the, the podcast. We appreciate you guys doing that. As, and this will be our first week um, with the uh, Stinger Spotlight uh, brought to you by Anytime Fitness. Um, that will be coming up later on in the show. Also, we have LaTroy Hawkins' interview coming up later in the show. And after the LaTroy Hawkins' interview, I will give you a keyword to text in for a chance to win a LaTroy Hawkins' signed baseball. So that is coming up also. Uh, but first, I'm gonna, we're going to talk a little Twins. So I'm assuming if you're listening to this and you're a fan of the Stingers and you're a fan of maybe LaTroy Hawkins, you're probably a fan of the Twins and baseball <laughs> as a whole. So, so stick around. Yeah. Li- listen to Dan and I talk Twins a little bit uh, before you, you jump over this section over to the uh, <laughs> LaTroy Hawkins or John Trousdale interview. Wow, uh, that's good stuff coming up. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so... So with the, John Trousdale, the infielder from Alabama, is our Stinger Spotlight. He'll be coming up at the end of the show, the Troy Hawkins interview coming up after Dan and I talk, including the giveaway for a potential uh, autographed baseball by LaTroy Hawkins. So uh, check out, listen for all of those, and I'll tell you how you have a chance to win that baseball. So, mm. as I mentioned, Dan Shell is here. Hello, Hello. Dan. Hello. Hey, man. Speaking of the Stingers, went to Friday's game. Mm. Uh, awesome. Oh, my gosh. One of those, like, if you didn't stick around to the end, you're super bummed because mm. we came back in a big way. Gave up five innings, including a grand slam in the first inning. Oh. Ended up winning the game 9-8. to eight. It was awesome. So Yeah, they've, uh, had a, they've had a great start. Yes. A great start. So, picking up where they did last year. So, that's that's awesome. And it's yeah, going to be a, exciting. a blast to be there all summer. Uh, so, speaking of blast, speaking of domination, oh my gosh, the, the there are Twinkies. Since we haven't talked them, talked about them for the last two weeks, nine and two. We were, I, and I, I'm almost positive we said the next time we do this, if they went 500 over that span, we'd be pretty happy. Yeah, because they had Tampa Bay. Yes, at Tampa Bay. Yes, and I was, I was expecting best case scenario split. Yeah, absolutely. If Especially been, after we got walloped the first game. Yep, I was like, two. If we got two two after that mm-hmm. four game series, I would have been all right. That's good. With it's a, a very team. good Tampa, yeah, Tampa at, team at Tampa. Yep. So the fact that you know we had the hiccup, where that first game, which is going to happen, sure, absolutely, every team. Yep, and, and then we just dominate them the next three games. Bounce and back just, and win three in a row. That's unreal. Yeah, it's, <laughs> wow. It's it's been so much fun, so much fun watching them, and it's incredible. And, yeah, every time we expect them to do to get bad or not to get bad to not not do as well, they just show us that they're just consistent. Yeah, consistent, consistent, consistent. Absolutely unbelievable. We're at forty and eighteen. Oof. What? Yeah. <laughs> Forty and eighteen—that's unbelievable, unbelievable record. And uh, and now we take on the Indians for three games. We literally could gain, you know, several more games. No reason we shouldn't sweep the Indians. They're not playing well. Nope. They're tied They're with the White Sox right now for second in the AL Central, I think. Yeah, yeah, the White Sox. What the heck? I, I, where where did they come yeah, from? Yeah, no kidding. So I mean, they must have. Yeah, most of their losses the last ten games were three of them to us. Yeah, but but uh, yeah, I was kind of surprised the White Sox all of a sudden jumped up there. I thought. Mm-hmm. I thought they were still down by the Tigers, who were 17, 18 games out. But, well, well whatever, Chicago. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll take it. 11 and a half games up. Yeah, that is – I mean, what else can you say about the Twins right now? It's unbelievable. Uh, three in Cleveland and then three in Detroit. So, you know. All. Yeah, all winnable. All winnable games, all um, division games that are only yeah. going to help us. Um, everybody talks about us being a weaker division. Mm-hmm. So let's take the let's take advantage of it. You got to win those games. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You yep. still so, got to win them. So a little bit. Uh, talk about a different, a few different players here. Um, Buxton. Um, wow. Still doing well. You know, he's he's still not hitting like outrageously average mm-hmm. wise. It's just making a difference. 
Yeah. On all sides of it because, you know, he's hitting the doubles still, I believe, the league leader in doubles. Um, mm-hmm. Still hitting a few home runs over the last couple of weeks. Uh, he and his defense his is defense. unbelievable. He, yeah, the, the in Tampa Bay that catch against catch. the wall and then picking the guy unbelievable on first. I I can just continuously watch that. It was so cool. What a play! Yeah, yeah. It's just three hundred feet, three hundred two feet, or yep. something like that. Yep. And then God, there, that was awesome. Yeah. Then there was the play where where uh, um, uh, Polanco. It was it was a, it was technically a squeeze. Yeah. squeeze play, but they made a comment how Buxton did not start running until the ball hit Polanco's bat. Oh. So normally, when there's a squeeze play, once the pitch is released, he's already the going. player starts running because that's the call play. Yeah. But he's just so damn fast. <laughs> yes, truly. <laughs> that that Plunk, that, I mean, they showed a still, uh, a still pitcher of where the where he was at and where the ball was at when the pitcher was grabbing the ball, yeah, he was still like 10, 12 feet away. There's no reason away. he should have made it. Yeah, oh, and he just, gosh. God, it's just, it's just so fun watching him run the bases. It's, it's, uh, it's absolutely fun. And and I, and I got to mention, I there's a couple of the national guys who uh, uh, who are finally talking about the twins. You know, yeah, they, right. They, we're kind of they're kind of forced to now because exactly. we're doing so well. Exactly. That uh, he, he one of the guys. Uh, Clinton Yates, he's a guy on on uh, uh, ESPN. Hmm. He he basically said that the Twins were gonna not only stop being good, but they were gonna trade Buxton. Oh geez, by the trade deadline. What? Yeah, because he's because they could get three players. That's the only reason why. It's like, uh, dude, don't don't come in from your little East Coast perch. Yeah, and act like you know the Minnesota Twins yeah, all of a sudden because exactly. you read a couple articles. <laughs> and and maybe saw a, you know, a half an hour of a game footage or something. Yeah, that's frustrating. You know, yeah, it's, we've built him up this long. We've been waiting for this Buxton to show up. Oh yeah, we're not going to get rid of him. Mm-mm, not plus at we point. got like three years of control still. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Just just imbecile. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I told him that on Twitter. Speaking of Twitter, <laughs> check out the K ninety five three Sports Show podcast on twitter i'm now on twitter k95 th- at k95 three sports show find me on there and follow me um we can talk twins throughout the throughout the week when i'm oh, not on the fun. show so cool. definitely check that out guys and uh so yeah so buxton doing great other players doing great uh, kepler oh yeah has been killing it i mean he's betting 342 over the last two weeks and that's with him going 0 for 10 his last three games so i mean <laughs> that's he was, incredible yeah Rosario's picking it back up to the yes, Rosario he used to. Polanco, just consistency, consistency. Unbelievable. His May uh, was incredible. 349, four home runs, 18 runs, 16 RBIs, just unbelievable. If he's not the starting shortstop in the All-Star game, then there's something wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. It's, it's, it's because people don't know who Polanco <laughs> right, is. Right, exactly. But now they know. Now they, they should. Know. They know who Polanco is. Uh, you know, uh, just a... Uh, we talked about you know being up. Just remember this: you talked about being up eleven and a half games. Yeah. Um, the the Twins are up at by ten games at the end of May. Every team who has been up ten games uh, at the end of May over the last fifty years have won their division. That's an unbelievable stat. It is. So wow. I mean, leave it to the Twins to have like an epic collapse, but <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, just legendary. Yeah. But but the way I mean that just bodes so well for us. And and I'm I'm expecting nothing more from them. Ex- nah, to continue great. to run it. Twenty six straight games with three plus runs. Is that awesome? And we just get a couple big old bats back too now. Exactly. Yeah. Garver and Cruz. Cruz is in the lineup for the first time tonight, Tuesday night. Looking forward to that. Uh, Thirty five games for him this season. Two seventy. He's hitting nine doubles, seven home runs. Great. I mean, yeah. just adding to that unbelievable lineup we've got already and uh, garver was hitting 329 with nine home runs yeah. before his injury so yeah welcome back boys <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i mean you i mean if you would have told us at the beginning of the season that the twins are going to be doing this well and hitting this many home runs and cruz was going to be out for two and a half three weeks <laughs> yeah and we didn't miss him that much yeah, like yeah. what <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, okay oh geez now we got to find yeah. a spot for okay. cruz okay <laughs> Is that the best something power else? Of all time. Yeah, no it's, kidding. And the uh, uh, the only downside, of course, the crew's coming back. Our boy uh, Luis Arias yes. uh, gets sent back down. But boy, what a hey. nice little run! He'll be back. Yes, he'll be back because he looked good. Yes, he's yeah. he's number one on the depth chart in AAA. That's for sure. Yeah. 
for when he for if there is an injury, he'll be up. He'll be on that first that first uh, plane ride to Minneapolis. That's a nice feeling too. If we do, and I hope not, but suffer an injury, yep. we know that kid's coming. We can feel pretty good about that. Yes, yes. Now, you know, jumping in to uh, little jump into pitching just a quick little bit here mm-hmm. before we wrap up our part of the show. But um, you know, starting pitching still doing solid. Like we said, the Tampa game, Perez had his first egg of sure. the season. And like we've said before, both of us play fantasy baseball. We know how starting pitchers can oh. just be dominant and then just crap the bed for a game or two. <laughs> Absolutely. You don't you ever the hear these f- uh, pitchers going undefeated because it just doesn't happen. They yeah. just, they, uh, just like as a team, you'll have your clunkers like that first Tampa Bay game. Pitcher's going to have some clunkers. And how he bounces back, that's you know a big thing, and that's what we've talked about the Twins. Part of their success this year, bouncing right back after a loss. Yes. And so let's see how he does. Yes, and and so, you know, Brios still you're doing okay over the last couple of weeks, but still getting wins for us. Mm-hmm. Of course, Odorizzi have, has only given up runs in one game in his last seven. Unreal. So six he's of his last good. seven games, he's, wow. I mean, Knock me over with a feather. I know, seriously. I, just, uh, I mean, yeah, it's better than we hoped. Yeah, crazy. But of course, there is the relief pitching, which is the the only hole I would say in our li- in our on our team is relief pitching. Yeah, if you had to pick on something, certainly. Yeah, and and, and it's, it hasn't been horrible. It's just it's it's been. Let's see, we're uh, there. We're we're ranked twenty first. Twenty first in relief pitching. Okay. 4.6 ERA is our combined relief pitching. Um, other division leaders, the Dodgers, who was the second best team mm-hmm. in the major league behind us, 4.57. Oh, wow. But you've got teams like Houston, who has a 2.78 Ouch. ERA for their bullpen, <laughs> and Tampa with a 3.33, and the Yankees with a 3.63. Hey. So, of course, everybody wants Kimbrel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think we're both yes on that. We oh, both want Kimbrel. Sure. I mean, absolutely. It's... Uh, it's an amazing talent, and it would just bolster our, um, you know, bolster that bullpen. And if we've got the money to spend, you know, uh, unfortunately, there's going to be so many teams coming for him. Yep. And if he gets paid the same, unfortunately, go to a bigger market. That's what stinks about the, you know, the market size thing. Yep. And, and Minnesota, if he can go to even San Francisco, who's a really mediocre team but a really great market, yep. he still might do that. You know, who knows? So we'll see. Or maybe like Nelson Cruz, like some of these other guys that took a chance on Minnesota this year. Boom! Look at the success. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I definitely would like to get Kimbrel, uh, Dallas Keuchel. I I can pass on. I, at this point, and what we're going to have to pay him, and yeah, and and, and how our starting rotation has mm-hmm, been, mm-hmm. Uh, you know. So I that's that's what I hope. I hope we sign Kimbrel, and I hope we make a trade um, sometime in July uh, for another bullpen help. Yeah, that would help, and I think that would really seal it up if we could get one of those guys, one of those rent to players for the rest of the season. Yep, and just finish out the year with him. I think that would be, uh, you know, I think that's. If I had to paint a perfect picture, sure, or picture, picture, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> picture, um, that's what I would. That's what I would say. Kimbrel, trade for another bullpen help. Yep, and I think mm. I think we'd be set. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Because like I said, just consistency with the hitting. A couple players aren't doing well. The other ones are. A couple other are just hitting out of their mind. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's been it's been so much fun uh, watching it, and. I'm just waiting for the the door to close or for <laughs> no. you know reality to hit the dream I to wake know. up. We don't want to think about it. But, it's almost uh, like we won't let ourselves enjoy it exactly. as Minnesota fans. Exactly. It's like, oh, we need to enjoy this. Yes, because exa- it's incredible. Because it never happens with us. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. But uh, you know, that's you know, boom, just like that. We're 14 minutes into our conversation with twins. Cool, man. We've got good stuff to get to. We yes. should boogie. Yes, yes. So um, I'm gonna let you guys uh, listen to the Latroy Hawkins interview. Way that cool. Is, that is coming up right now. Great guy, super nice. And then right after him, we'll be going into the uh, John Trousdale, uh, the infielder for the Stingers for the Stinger Spotlight, and uh, from the University of Alabama. Listen to his his great Southern accent. Oh, that's cool. With that, so um, and also listen for the, uh, the the baseball giveaway with Latroy Hawkins um, in between those two interviews. And for your chance to win that, I will explain all of that when that interview is over. So uh, here's the uh, Latroy Hawkins interview. 
Hey everyone, I'm here now with uh, Latroy Hawkins. He's nice enough to come in and sit down and talk with me while he's in town for the uh, Stingers uh, season opener tonight on Wednesday. Uh, so I appreciate you coming in and taking a few minutes. Oh, happy to be here Thank in you. Wilmer. Yes, there we go. <laughs> uh, you know, before we really get into uh, other questions, uh, let's just talk about the Twins. This year. How fun is it watching the Twins play this year? Well, it's... <laughs> It's always fun to watch a winner, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I love my Minnesota fans, and, and they love a winner, and they showed that this past week when they came out in droves, but, you know, just a lot of things going right. Last year, a lot of things went wrong, a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. You know, people talk about, oh, we were terrible. No, we wasn't terrible. We were snake bitten by a lot of injuries, and, and we just wasn't able to recover. This year, we've been pretty much injury-free, and that helps, and the, the couple injuries that we have had, We've had guys to step in for those guys that are on an injured list, and we hadn't missed a beat. Yep. So I think that was that's the key. But it's definitely fun to watch a winner. Uh, the guys are playing great. They're swinging the bat well. We're playing defense like we always do. We're pitching well. Um, but we all know that baseball is a long season, 162-plus mm -hmm. games. Um, and I don't think the Cleveland Indians are going to lay down. I think they're going to be – they're going to make a push and – Hopefully we'll be able to uh, withstand that that push that they're going to have and and win our division. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's uh, you know, as 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 a born and raised here in Minnesota, you know, there's there's a lot of a lot of fans out there just like, oh, wait for the bottom to fall, wait for the bottom. I'm like, why are you guys being so negative? Sit and enjoy this. You yeah. know what I mean? You you don't you know even if it does end up falling off eventually, it's just sit and enjoy this because we aren't we haven't been accustomed to this, and especially with the home run side. Well, for yeah, twins, fans. that's true. But people forget two years ago we played in the playing game. Yep, yep. Two years ago. Yep. But I think I think humans in general we're just people who love to want to have something to be upset about. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. We, we always think the worst and never look for the positive in, in any situation. That's just part of our human nature. And yep. you know what? Just you know, I would tell those fans just you know you can keep. Thinking like that and talking like that, and the guys that keep going out getting W's. Exactly, that's that's great. So, you know, like I said, you you know, you you had a 21 year career, which right there is just amazing. I mean, you don't hear about that all the time. So, you know, I was looking through your stats throughout the years, and I and I, I pinpointed your last season with us, 2003, as probably your best overall season uh, that you had. You. Uh, you were nine and three, one point eight six ERA, seventy five Ks and seventy seven innings, only fifteen walks. You know, you know. I've always kind of wondered, you know, when 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 pitching during the season or any se other season that is going well like that, is it is it difficult to not get wrapped up in your stats and how well it's going, or do, does that just not even cross your mind? I might all? be just a hand one of, of a handful of athletes that I never looked at my stats during the season. Oh, wow. Never. That'd be difficult. I <laughs> never looked at my stats. I knew how I was doing. I didn't know oh, yeah. I didn't need yeah. the the, the uh, <laughs> stat sheet to to um validate what I was doing. I knew how I was doing. Yeah. I knew it. I never looked at stat sheet. Never mm -hmm. ever my 25 years in the game, maybe in the minor leagues. But when I got to the big leagues, I never looked hmm. At the stat sheet, maybe because I probably looked at it early on and it was so bad. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to look at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I, I actually was, uh, I, no I noticed that you have been helping out with the Twins broadcast. I watched the uh, Seattle and uh, Angels series and I heard you talking on there. And uh, first, I, first off, I think you've done a good job. I, I, I like what the Twins are doing, having kind of the rotation. and, and Having a mixture. Yep, yes. and having the past players coming back. I really like what they're doing. I thought uh, Morneau is also very good at, mm -hmm. at it, too. It's, it's been fun to listen to and watch. And, uh, you know, uh, last week when you were in Seattle, uh, you mentioned um, a, a story about Griffey Jr. on, on air. One I, huge yeah, – I don't. I've never really followed baseball really hardcore. So outside of the Twins growing up, but Griffey was my Griffey was my boy. I loved Griffey, um, besides Pocket, of course. And uh, but Griffey was my outside of Twins guy. But uh, you talked about him pulling you aside or something, giving you pointers. Uh, would you mind kind of retelling that story a little bit for for well, my listeners? It was early in my career when I was I was starting in you know the late '90s, and I started against Seattle, and I think I had two strikes on Griffey. And I threw him a changeup, and my changeup was probably my third or fourth best pitch. And he hit it for a home run. 
and it was early in the game. I was taken out of the game, and at the old Metrodome, the clubhouses were right by side by side. And the only mm-hmm. thing separated the clubhouse was a laundry room and a little small, like, bat room. Okay. That was it. So it was like less than a five-yard di- distance between the clubhouses. And I was up in the clubhouse, and the visiting clubby, Troy Machen, came and got me and said, hey, Griffey wants, wants to see you, want to talk to you. I'm like, Griffey? <laughs> really? You just took me deep in the upper tank. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, he want to – he wanted to talk to you. So I go in there and he was like, hey, man, listen. He was like, why would you throw me a change up in that situation? You had me two strikes and I hadn't even took a good swing at your fastball. And then you gave me a, you gave me an out. You gave me an opportunity to be able to put a good swing on your third or fourth best pitch. And he was like, your fastball is good enough. And now, granted, I was young and taking this from Griffey. I knew who he was. I was a, I'm still a Griffey fan, and yep. I was a bigger fan back then. And you know, the <laughs> baseball player, I'm, I know him personally now, so I'm I'm more of a fan of the person, the human being he is. But I'm like, he's trying to set me up. He's trying to set me up for failure. <laughs> this is what he's doing. He's trying to set me up for failure. For failure. But you know what? He told me that, and from that moment, I think it changed my career. I mean, it took me a while to completely understand what he was what he was telling me that my fastball was was um enough mm-hmm. like i had a really good fastball and once i understood that it changed my career it nice. changed my career because i think when it was all said and done i probably threw 72 73 percent fastball so every seven out of ten pitches is going to be a fastball so you knew what you're going to get whether you hit it or not that was on you yeah yeah exactly <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I, I loved that story, and I wanted to make sure our listeners heard that who, who might not have caught it during the game. Um, you know, uh, before those series, is, had you ever done TV Color Man before? No. Uh, when I retired in 2000, October 2015, I was just going to stay home in 2016. I didn't want to travel or do anything. Right. and just 21 been, years of traveling. on the road a long all the time. Years of that. Well, a company called TuneIn Radio. Mm, yep. TuneIn is uh, they have an app, and you can listen to podcasts and audio books and all the sports you want for free. Yep. Well, they were they were doing a um, they doing a new baseball show, mm. and got a call and they asked me if I wanted to do it, and I'm like, I don't know. He was like, Well, you can do it from your house, and I was like, Whoa, you can do it from my house. <laughs> now my my antennas went up. I'm yeah, like, Oh, yeah. I can do radio and watch games. And enjoy watching the games and do it from the own comfort of my office. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No All right. Not. So I did that. I did it probably about. I probably did about seventy-five games. Uh, my producer was in L.A. and my co-host was in right outside of D.C. at the time. Holden Kushner. He's um. He's uh on the radio in Denver now, and set it up and we watched. All 15 major league games on a good night, and we talked about each game. We were, we were um, bounced back and forth between the games. Say, if you had a 10 game hit streak when you came to hit, we would go to your game. And hmm. if some guy was throwing a no hitter, cool. get the no hitter watch, we'd go watch him. So we were bouncing around the league. Interesting. And it was fun. I did that. 75 games. I would, um, they started, started at six and we were done at 11. So it was five hours a night. Hmm. Um, I would take a nap at one, I would take a nap at three. Wake up at five, shower, put on my pajamas, <laughs> go in the go in the office, cut all my equipment on, and do the game. Eleven o'clock, shut everything down, go get in the bed, and yeah, go to nice, sleep. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> rough days, rough, rough days. days. Yeah. Tune in radio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, um, uh, obviously, uh, you've so you've enjoyed. Did you enjoy the the Seattle and the LA thing? Did you enjoy doing it on TV and stuff like that? Oh yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, you, you're in the rotation then throughout yeah, the season, type of thing. Yeah, I won't be back on until the end of July when the Twins are in Chicago playing the White Sox. Okay. And then I'm not on again until the last homestand. I'll have that home whole last homestand here oh, in nice. Minneapolis. Okay. So I'm doing 18 games this year. The last two years I did 12 apiece. But this year, I bumped it up six games. Okay, nice. And who knows? Maybe more next year. We'll see. But yeah. I think 18 right now is, is enough. I got like you, people think it's easy, but oh, yeah. as you know, it's oh, not yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> you have to be a real talker mm-hmm. to be able to get through a whole game of talking about the. You have to be a talker, yep. and it's just, I'm I'm a talker, but I'm not. I'm not. I have to build up my endurance for that. Yeah. Because yeah. I get tired probably about. The third game in, yeah, yeah. so I had to do seven. I was exhausted yeah. by day five. <laughs> I was exhausted. Well, then, well, you had a little gift because the Angels game was 
was rained out, and then you you didn't do the last game of the Angels game. Right? No, I didn't. But that Wednesday, we still went to the ballpark. Oh, we yeah. still prep. Yeah. We still did pregame because you're like hey, it's it's L.A. and there's no way there's gonna be a rain out. We did everything <laughs> but call the game. That was it. And only and I didn't get a chance to call the game on Saturday because I mean on that Thursday because my daughter was graduating from mm. high school. Oh, awesome. Yep. Awesome. How many kids do you have? Only have one. Only one. Nice. A daughter. She's 17. She's attending Concordia University in Irvine, California. Oh, nice. Yep. Nice. Well, congratulations on that, on her. And uh, what is she going into? Uh, theater. Theater oh. major nice. and minor in um, sports marketing. Oh, okay. Nice. Yep. Awesome. Well, good for her. I wish her luck. Um, uh, get a little thing here. Uh, for Your favorite and least favorite player to go up against? Hmm. My favorite. <laughs> is there just one, like maybe one good player that you just dominated, or, or an old buddy of yours that you? Yeah, like I to dominated show up? Matt Holiday. Oh, and guy that I hated to go up against was Harold Baines. Harold Baines. Harold killed me. Harold Baines and Edgar Martinez, two <laughs> Hall of Famers, might I add. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good reason not to be as good against them. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, obviously Minnesota is your favorite place to play. To have played, of course, obviously, right? You know what I had <laughs> with the eleven teams. Minnesota is definitely number one on my list, and that's the place I first made it to the major leagues. The team that drafted me out of high school, but I played in some really cool places and eleven different cities. Yeah, and what would be your second? What was another place that you? Had? You know what? I think I got three cities that are right th- at second. I don't have a third and fourth. They all tied. I got yeah. uh, Milwaukee, mm. Denver, mm. and Toronto, mm. Minnesota, and then those three. Nice. And they're all tied at second because. And I really enjoyed – I enjoyed Milwaukee because it had a lot of, you know, the Minneapolis, Minnesota feel yep. for the people. Yep, the Midwestern. And Colorado is just a just one of those places of super clean and people are nice and everybody's outdoorsy. And I like playing in Denver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then Toronto is the place I spent, you know, my last, you know, 95 days in professional baseball as a player. And that city was on rocking because we won the American League East that mm. year. They were winning, and it was just, you know, when I got traded at the deadline on in '15, I got a tweet before I landed in Toronto the next day, and a guy had tweeted me and said, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna show you how it feels to have a whole country rooting for you, not just a oh, city." Right. <laughs> and when I read it, I'm like, oh, and I'm like, oh, oh. That makes sense. Yeah. It's the only baseball team in the country. Yeah. Well, big league team, major league team. Yeah. I'm like, After the Expos left. Okay. I'm well, like, all right, that's pretty That's pretty darn cool. Yeah, well, that's cool. Awesome, awesome. Well, when I started this podcast back in, in August during the Viking season, I had uh, every new person who came in on my podcast, I have had them give me their Mount Rushmore of Vikings players. Well, obviously, you're – and what, or actually, and when I, I interviewed Jack Morris when he was here in town, and obviously I tweaked it a little bit, what would be your Mount Rushmore of twins players? Four players up on the mountain. Curry Puckett. Ooh. Doesn't have to be necessarily the greatest of all time. It's who you personally. Who I personally. Who you Curry personally. Curry Puckett. I would also have to go Scott Erickson. Nice. Um, myself. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and Eddie Guardado. Ah, Eddie. Nice. Yeah. That's a good four. Every day, Eddie. That's a good four. I like it. I like and if it. If I can't use myself, I would have to go with Christian Guzman. Ah, nice. Ah. It's it's nice to look back on those on the teams from the early two thousands, late nineties and just be like, oh, I forgot about that person. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or I forgot they were on our team. Cavid, Luis Rivas, yep. Matt LaCroix. Nice. Nice. Great Mount Rushmore for that. Uh, now we'll get into the rapid question segment. I'll be doing this every week with our Stinger players and coaches that come in. Um, so it's just going to be some quick questions. One, two, three answers, or three word answers will work just fine. Um, so we'll start off with uh, favorite color. Red. Favorite MLB club? Minnesota. One thing you can't live without? Wearing a watch. Favorite thing to do in your downtime? Relax. Favorite all-time baseball player? Jackie Robinson. The one food you can never get sick of? 
Beans and rice. Beans and rice. Favorite TV show of all time? Of all time? Yep, your favorite show. <laughs> Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell. Nice. <laughs> favorite movie of all time? Harlem Nights. If you weren't... No, no, oh. I take that back. Remember the Titan. Ah, nice. Uh, if you weren't involved in baseball, what would you want to be doing? If I hadn't been a baseball player, I would be a physical therapist. Hmm, nice. Ford or Chevy? Ford. I drive a F-250. Man. Ford is the best in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll agree with you on that one. PlayStation or Xbox? Neither. Neither. Don't play games. Don't play games, okay. I got kicked out of recess, yeah. off of recess, because I didn't like to play games. <laughs> <laughs> Burger King or McDonald's? Neither. Neither. Not a fast food? N- well, I like some fast food. I'll go with Jack in the Box there you or go. Whataburger in Texas. Yeah, there you go. Uh, smell you hate the most? The smell I hate the most? <laughs> I can't say nothing ridiculous. Like, oh, you smell it that often that you hate it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Any kind of perfume when I have a sign when my sinus is acting oh, up. Oh, <laughs> I hear you. I Any hear, kind of perfume. I hear you. <laughs> Smell you love the most. Vanilla. Vanilla. I oh, love vanilla. Nice. Superhero power you'd want. Don't like superheroes. No. No. Nope. No. No. Nope. Fa- no. No. <laughs> favorite musical group or artist. My favorite artist is. Tupac. Nice. Nice. Great choice. Great choice. Favorite holiday? Hmm. Favorite holiday? Hmm. I'm going to go with Labor Day since I'm a union guy. <laughs> 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 Labor nice. Day. Nice. I like it. I like it. Well, awesome. That is the end of rapid questions there. and uh, That I, wasn't so rapid. I had to think about a yeah. few of <laughs> Well, we we did our best at making them rapid, and then of the 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 offshoot of talking about Whataburger. But uh, I, I want to thank you for coming in and, and spending a few minutes with me on the podcast. Uh, uh, welcome to Wilmer. Enjoy the evening here. Enjoy the night of Stingers baseball. I will be there tonight with my family because um, I try to make every home uh, uh, home opener for sure uh, with them. So um, enjoy the night. Enjoy Stinger baseball. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. All right, and that was the uh, Latroy Hawkins interview. Thank you guys for listening to that. Now, here's your chance to win uh, uh, signed baseball by Latroy Hawkins. All you have to do is tech, text the word baseball to 320-231-1600. That's text the word baseball to 320-231-1600 for your chance to win a Latroy Hawkins signed baseball. And now let's uh, go into the Stinger Spotlight. It's time for the Stinger Spotlight, brought to you by Anytime Fitness in Wilmer, Litchfield, and Marshall. All right, here for the very first Stinger Spotlight is John Trousdale from the University of Alabama. Welcome, John. Thank you for coming in. I uh, appreciate you having me on. Awesome, awesome. Well, you know, you, you graduate high school from Rogersville, Alabama. Oh. Did you grow up there? I did. Yes, sir. Lived there my whole life. Graduated from Lauderdale County High School. Awesome, awesome. For, you. For those that are listening and don't know Alabama too well, like myself, uh, Rogersville is, is, is actually on the quite a bit to the very north part of Alabama. Yeah. Not too far, not too far from the Tennessee border. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's actually kind of. I was looking. It's almost completely in, exactly in between Nashville and Birmingham. Yep. I would assume it's almost the exact same mileage almost to both, probably. Yeah, not many people know where that's at in yeah. Nashville or Birmingham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, when people think college sports in Alabama, they think football. Oh, yeah. Did you play football in high school also? I did. I did. I played all four years and when I started when I was in the fifth grade. So, I've been playing most all my life. That was kind of my first love, to be honest. Okay. Now, I was going to say, it, it, it almost kind of has to be in yeah. Alabama, isn't it? I mean, it's, oh, yeah. you think out of Texas and Alabama, you think football. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, what, posi- what position did you play? I played safety, and okay. uh, I kind of played all over the place on offense. So. Okay. Nice, nice. If I, if I ever played football, I was like six foot. 145 pounds sopping wet in high school, so I didn't play football. <laughs> but if I did, I would have played safety. I love safety. What made you choose I mean, were you just better at baseball than football, or is that 
Uh, I feel like I just kind of put more time into baseball. You know, once I got older, that's when I started to really fall in love with all aspects of the game of baseball. And, uh, you know, that's where my heart was when I uh, started getting recruited and and uh, got the opportunity to play at my dream school and capitalized. Awesome, awesome. So how is – how popular is baseball in the state? Because, like I said, people talk football of Alabama. I mean, is it still right. a pretty popular – Sport in the state, or is it? Yeah, is it, it just is football, and everybody is a distant second, third, fourth. Yeah, it is. You know, obviously football is up there for number one, but um, I feel like baseball is kind of growing in the state. You know, That's good. With, uh, with the youth and everything. So I don't know if it's beating basketball, but it's close. Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. I would assume that a lot of people who play both sports kind of lean towards football because of the popularity of it right. down there. Correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No okay. doubt. Yeah. So. Did you play summer ball after your freshman year? Did of, you go anywhere? Of, of, college? of college? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I went to the uh, NECBL in the New England League. Oh, okay. Uh, for, played for the Mystic Schooners. Okay. Where are Mystics in? In Connecticut. Oh, Connecticut. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Nice, nice. Uh, you know, then obviously you, you played your after your freshman year there, but then last year you decided to uh, come up to Wilmer to play. You know, what, what, were your, what were your friends and family's thoughts on coming to Minnesota? You know, what... What do you know of Minnesota before you came uh, up here? I didn't know anything. I did not know one thing about it. Uh, I knew the Twins played here, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, nothing, man. They they just kind of family and friends, you know, going up there with them Yankees. I'm like, <laughs> that's all I kind of know about it. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. You know, uh, you know, like I mentioned, you played last year with the Stingers. And you had a solid season. Uh, you know, you batted 286, 20 doubles, a triple, five home runs, and you led the team in bullet with 34 RBIs and 41 walks. Um, it was the best season for the Stingers in their nine seasons. Uh, what did you love the most about playing summer ball here with the Stingers last season? Oh, wow. Uh, there was so much to love about it, really. I mean, it's just a great situation here. Starting with the coaches and, uh, you know, my host family, Jack and Lori Swanson. Uh, you know, if you're in a good situation in sun, summer ball with coaches like Bo Henning and Al Leva and Matt Caselli and then uh, the top of the organization, um, man, it just, it's just a good place to be comfortable and get in the groove and get uh, good at bats and playing time. Yeah, and and obviously you liked it because uh, you're back again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they invited you back and you're like, yes, let's let let me come back. And, yep. and you know, so you know, you, you have your 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 head coach for Alabama. You're with him nine months out of the year, and now for last year and now this year, you'll be three months with the Stingers coaching staff. Also, the same three coaching staffs, which Mark and Ryan mentioned, was the first time in Stinger history that they returned the entire coaching staff mm -hmm. from one season to the next. Um, you know, what has Bo and the Stingers coaching staff helped you with with your game the most? Uh, I think mostly uh, just the mental aspect of it. Um, you know, they, they do a good job of letting us play free. Um, you know, if they need if, – if they feel like they need to talk to us and, you know, give us a couple tips here and there, they're – very cool about doing that, you know. Um, Al Leva is a hitting guy, so uh, I talked to him a little bit more, and I talked to Bo. He's a pitching guy, but you know, Al, he just he knows what he's talking about, and he's real easy to talk to. So good. Uh, that's what I've enjoyed about it. Good, good. Well, I I noticed on uh, the home opener you played third base. Um, is that the preferred position that you yeah, like? Yeah, that's, that's probably my primary. Okay, because yeah. I say because when I looked on the Alabama thing, it just said infield. Right. It didn't give a specific base, but you know how they third. do it. They, you know how they do it. Everybody comes in as a shortstop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like third or second. <laughs> yeah, <so>. yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, you know that's that's what I've got for the get to uh, just to get to know you section there. But uh, we'll jump right away into the uh, rapid questions here. All right. Um, section. So, like I mentioned to you, I'm just going to go through some questions, have you uh, answer them back as fast as possible, and uh, and we'll kind of go from there. So, we will start here with favorite color. White. Favorite MLB club. Yankees. Yankees, really? Yeah. I was going to guess weird, Braves. Weird, yeah. I got a soft spot for the Braves, yeah. but I really like the Yankees. Nice, nice. Um, uh, let's see. Favorite thing to favorite thing to do in your downtime. Uh, spend time on a boat on the river. Nice. Yeah. Nice. One thing you can't live without. Oh. 
I'm looking at my sunglasses here. I wear my sunglasses every day. I think that's it. That, my Costa sunglasses. That's that's me too. Man. People make fun because it's it's it. It'll be winter and it'll be overcast and there's snow on the ground, but I'll have my sunglasses on. Yep. I wear contacts and it just it, my eyes are a little more sensitive, so I always always got that. But they make fun of me anyway. Sure. I'm like, Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I look good. Um, the one the one food you can never get sick of. Steak. Favorite TV show of all time? Game of Thrones. Favorite movie of all time? Mm, that's tough. I'm going to go with Field of Dreams there. Field oh, of Dreams. Nice. Yes, that is a classic. Yeah. Uh, let's see. If you weren't playing baseball, what would you want to do? I saw you were doing a business degree. Mm-hmm. What, what would you want to do if, you can't play, if you're not playing baseball? Uh... Run a taco stand. Run a taco, nice. <laughs> um, Ford or Chevy? Chevy. PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. Burger King or McDonald's? Burger King. Smell you hate the most? Oh. Mm, that's tough. I think like Clorox. Oh, I hate that the smell. The bleach smell. Yeah, the yeah. bleach. Yep. Not a big fan. Yeah. Smell you love the most. Uh, a wood bat on the ball mark right after you foul a ball off. Oh, really? Yes. It's you foul a ball off, you don't hit it good, don't hit it square, and you smell it. Hmm. That's my favorite smell in the world. Wow. I, I don't think I've ever smelled that. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. It's there. Now, 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 next time I'm at the game, if uh, when I'm there for the uh, for I'll the toss station, my bat up to you. Yeah, yeah, I want to come down there after you hit a round the field. What the hell's Bo out there smell that bat for? <laughs> uh, superhero power you'd want? Super strength. All right. Favorite musical group or artist? Oh, I got a few. Um, I guess country, I'm going to have to say Alan Jackson. Uh, rap. I listen to pretty much everything. I like Future. Okay. And I like a little throw. I like Frank Sinatra. I'm, I like throwing that's, it back a little bit. Yeah, no, that's that's it's good to have that wide variety. Yeah. I, I I assume growing up in the South that you're a big country fan for sure. Um, and obviously just being your age, you got to be into hip hop and got stuff. Got to. And, and uh, Future, I've tried to listen to some of his stuff. I'm I'm older than you. Yeah closer to 40 and uh you know i just it, it, it makes me i have tough time getting into the current artists i don't know i don't I can see it i don't I like the it. i don't like the uh the voice um that, the auto tune the t-pain brought in yeah, yeah the auto tune yeah. thing i oh i hate it with a passion <laughs> <laughs> favorite holiday christmas christmas that's the best one awesome well that is the rapid questions segment there i appreciate you going through with that i appreciate yeah. you coming in here those weren't too bad. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't too Those bad. I wasn't going to get too controversial. Yeah, it was, it was too bad. <laughs> Just kind of get to know who you are type yeah. of situation. So um, I wish uh, you luck this season with the Stingers. I appreciate it. I wish it. you luck at Alabama um, and your future in baseball. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you so much for coming in and well, spending a few minutes with me. No, I appreciate you having me on, Bo. Yep. Thanks again. Yep. All right, now that was a great interview. Great interviews, I should say, with Latroy Hawkins and John Trousdale. Check out the Stinger Spotlight now every week during Stinger Stadium season, and we will be talking about, uh, we'll be interviewing a variety of different players and coaches. So that's all for this week, guys. Uh, We will see you next week.